Good morning class. Hopefully you all are ready. Soon we can begin. The one in Zoom. Hopefully you will be able to see the screen soon. Okay, hold on for a while. Okay, hold on. Uh. I'm trying to share screen. So, yep. Hopefully, I can do it. Share screen. Okay, just give me a second. Uh -huh. I'll try to share screen. Not getting connected. <coughs> okay, hold on for a while. Hopefully, I can get connected soon and then I can share screen with all of y'all. Okay, cool. Now you all can see my screen, I guess. Everyone can see the screen, right? Can I get back some responses? If you can see the screen, please say yes. Can someone respond back to me? 
Okay, morning class. I hope you all can see the screen. If you can see the screen, please respond back, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let me just share the screen on the YouTube also right now. And we have one line. Okay. Windows. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so as far as I know, I can see many of you all are on the Zoom and also on YouTube. Okay, thank you for joining the class. Uh, welcome back to those who are back in the college. Okay, and today, as promised, I will go into chapter 8, as I told you all last week. Lah. Okay, so hopefully you all are ready for chapter 8 and be prepared to study. Lah. Okay, for my class, I've already give you all a lot of exam papers to practice, so you all can start doing that. Okay, and hopefully you guys will be able to finish up the exam papers as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. So, yep, we have around 35 of you all on YouTube. We're still waiting for your friends to come in. Okay. And I have around uh, 17 of you all. Okay. I have around 57 of you all over here right now. So, still waiting for your friends to come in. Then we can start. I give until 10.05. Then I start. Huh? Okay. <coughs> Chapter 8. I hope everybody can hear me in YouTube. Can hear me right clearly. Any problem? Those in YouTube, can you all hear me clearly? Any problem? Please let me know. In Zoom, I think you all can hear me. No problem. Right, class? Can hear, right? Okay, cool, Akil, thanks. Want to respond, Akil? Okay, Akil responded that he can hear me, so okay lah. So, thanks. Okay, Fatin, good. Okay, Izzyani, okay, Nurul Adira. Uh, the internet here is quite laggy, so hopefully that I can respond back to your questions as soon as possible lah. Okay, uh, I just give some more, two more minutes, then I start lah. Okay, exactly two more minutes, then I start for chapter eight. Okay, Alia Machita, Alia Binti, Kyril, thanks. I know Amani, thanks. I respond. Okay, I'm still waiting for your friends to join in. So as soon as they join in, then we can start. Okay, I got one more minute left for them to join in and we start. Okay, so here we go. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the class. Lah. Okay, uh, so I'm going to start today's class. Uh, well, I know that many of you all are coming back to college, and you all told me that you all can't join the class, but I think uh, you still can join the class uh, and join while you are in the car or what. But if you can't, then it's okay. You can see the recording on YouTube later. Okay, so let's begin. Now, topic 8.0, Limits and Continuity. Okay, this is the topic about limits and continuity before we go enter differentiation. So if you look at 8.0 here, limits and continuity, we got subtopic there 8.1 which is called limit. And a limit of a function is de defined such that the limit of x goes to a, okay, fx is l. Okay, so that is how we define the limit of a function. Okay, so another one more word here, they say a function fx is said to approach a constant l as the limit when x approaches as a below. Okay, where fx is a function which assumes a corresponding set of values and x is an independent variable. So x is something which can keep on changing. Okay, now let's say the function 
okay, that x goes to a, fx equals to l, means that the x gets close to a, but x is not equals to a, fx must get close to l. So if I draw a graph over here, this is a graph, and a is here, this is the graph here. So if x is getting closer to a here, or from the left hand side, or from the right hand side, doesn't matter, okay, uh, it must be getting closer to one value over here, which is called L. Okay, which is called L over here. Understand? Uh, so, this is what they mean by here. Lah. Okay, this is what they mean by this over here. Okay. So, now let's see over here one example over here. You can see that limit of X goes to zero. So, approaching uh, from the left-hand side, X going to zero. The value here, we do not know what is the value of that, but we know that thing is approaching 1.0001. So the thing is approaching 1.00001, which is nearly 1. And from the right-hand side also, the fellow is approaching 1.0001. So it's nearly 1.00. Understand? So an X approaches 0 from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side. The limit approaches 1. The limit approaches 1. And if I really see the rule of limit, the rule of limit tells me if limit X goes to 0, X squared plus 1. If I put 0 inside here, 0 plus 1, okay, uh, limit x goes to 0, the answer is 1 over there. So you can see that the answer is going to be 1 over there. Okay, that's what they mean by that uh, over there. Okay, now if I look at example number 2, uh, example number 2 here first, okay, before I go on, let's look at the first properties of limit. The first property of limit tells you if fx is a constant, Okay, fx is a constant, the limit will approach a constant. For example, a graph like this. This is y, this is x, this is y equals to 5. Okay, and the thing A is here. It approaches from the right-hand side and the left-hand side. From left-hand side, A, A is 5. From the right-hand side also, A, A also is 5. So the constant will remain 5, means the limit will remain 5. So for example, limit of x goes to 4. Of 5 is 5. Limit of x goes to 0 of a is still a lah, because a is a constant. Understand? Or limit of x goes to 4 is just uh, 4 lah. Understand? Because it's a constant over there. Clear? Uh, so that's what they mean by limit of x goes to z c. Okay? Limit of x goes to a for a function c there is c still. Okay? For constant, it will remain the same. However, limit of x, okay, limit of x of fx, okay, going to a then, okay, limit of x goes to a of x, uh, this will become a. Now, why? Because if I substitute a inside here, a is a, right? Not, uh, a substitute inside x is a, right? Not. So, fx equals to x, fa will equals to a. So, that's why it's a. Right? Uh, if I put limit of x goes to 1. Okay, for function x here, the answer is 1. Why? Because f1 is 1 over there. And let's say you might tell me, sir, if I make it more complicated, limit of x goes to 3 for x squared plus 1, then this is just 3 squared plus 1, which is 10. That's all. So that is the rule of limit. Okay, that is the rule of limits over there. I hope until here you understand. Okay, I hope until here you understand. Okay. Any question until here so far, plus? Can anybody got any questions inside here? Can hear right? Any problem? Any problem, class? Okay, huh? everybody okay? Huh? Okay, good then. So if you're okay, then we go on. Uh, let's see over here. Limit of x goes to negative 1 of negative 1 cube minus 10. Uh, this is just negative 1 minus 10, which is negative 11. So the limit is negative 11. Then. And limit of x, okay, goes to maybe 2 of x cubed minus 10. Uh, this is just 8 minus 10, which is negative 2 over there. Lah. Okay? Okay. So that one we already done. Okay? Uh, we know already that the rules of limits over there, uh, if for division also is the same thing. Lah. Okay, so if you just look at example over here a little bit, A here, we know limit of X goes to 3. Okay, for 3 cube over 3, uh, this is just 27 over 3, which is 9. 
and limit of x goes to 2 of 3x squared plus 4. So this is 3, 2 square plus 4. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16. Okay, that's for B then. For C, limit of x goes to 3 of 2x squared plus x minus 3 over x cubed plus 4. This is basically 2, 9 plus 3. Okay, minus 3 over 27 plus 4. So this is 18 over 31. That's it. Can okay, see that? Okay. And the last one there, the limit of x goes to uh, 4. Yes, not? Yeah, limit of x goes to 4 of 2x minus cube root of 2x. This is just 8 minus cube root of 8 which is 8 minus 2, which is 6 over there. So I hope until here you all are clear. Right? Yeah, I hope until here you all are clear. Okay, now we go on some more. Okay, before I go on some more, so we already know the rules of limit. Now there is a method to find limit. So there are three methods to find limit. First thing, the first one is called substitution, which we just did just now. Okay, just now we just did when we substitute, it cannot equals or the function cannot become undefined. Right? Okay, the function can't become undefined. The second method is called factorization, and the third method is called multiplication of conjugates. Okay, the third method is called multiplication of conjugates. Of course, we have the fourth method. The fourth method is called uh, what is this called? Uh, approximation. Okay, approximation. Uh, but this method here, we will not use until the last thing, okay? Until the last uh, solution where we have no other method to use, then maybe we use this, okay? So let's start with uh, substitution first. We can substitute the thing. As long as we can substitute and the function is defined, we substitute. As long as we can substitute and the function is defined, we just substitute and uh, get the limits. Understand? Okay? Then the second method is come to factorization. When we substitute and the function is undefined, then we have to do factorization. And sometimes we can't factorize. Then we will use multiplication of the conjugates. Okay, then we will use multiplication of the conjugates. So whatever you study for conjugate in chapter 1, you have to apply back over here. Of course, it's not complex number conjugate. It's a third conjugate. Okay, it will be the third conjugate there. Okay, let's see a few examples over here. So if I give you this example here, limit of x goes to 2, x squared plus 4 over x plus 2. <coughs> so I told you the first method is substitution. If I substitute this inside here, I get 4 plus 4 over 4. So this is 8 over 4, which I get 2. Or this is defined. The function is defined. So no problem. You use substitution and you already get the answer there. Okay, so you already get the answer. The limit of x goes to 2 is 2. Okay, doesn't matter from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side. When they put x goes to 2 positive, this is from right-hand side. Uh, if I put negative, this will be from left-hand side. Understand? 2 negative will be from left-hand side. Then. Okay? So, if I know that substitution can over here, I need to go and do factorization or what multiplication of conjugate. Okay. Now we look at this example here. If I go and put limit of x goes to 3, okay, for 3 square minus 9 over 3 minus 3. Oh, this becomes 0 over 0. This is undefined. This is undefined. Okay. Now, since this is undefined, so we cannot be using substitution. So substitution failed. Understand? Substitution failed. So method 1 failed. Huh? So since substitution failed already, we're going to use factorization. So limit of uh, x goes to 3. Okay, here can factorize x minus 3, x plus 3 over x minus 3. So we can simplify. We get limit of x goes to 3, x plus 3. Now we can substitute, no problem. If I put 3 inside right now, I get 3 plus 3 is 6. Uh, now I get the answer. Here. Can you see that? So the limit is going to be 6 over there. Understand until here so far, everybody? Can? Clear until here? Okay, let's look at example number 3 here. If you look at the limit, limit of x goes to 2. I can go and substitute first, 8 minus 8. Then here I get 4 minus 4, oh, 0 over 0. Or the denominator got 0, so it's undefined. Lah. Undefined, so cannot use substitution. Cancel. We have to use 
factorization. So if you look at factorization, <coughs> I know that x cubed minus 8, okay, can divide by x minus 2, long division, your previous chapter, chapter 6 there, remember? Okay, so from there, you can put x inside here, you get x squared, sorry, x squared inside here, you get x cubed minus 2x squared. So here, you're going to get uh, 2x squared minus 8, am I right? Yeah, uh, 2x squared minus 8 like that. Okay, so since it's x cubed, so x squared, uh, yeah, okay, 2x squared minus 8 there. So you know one thing that the balance over here, okay, the balance there, factor x minus 2 there. If x minus 2 is a factor, I can go and find out. I can go and, oh, sorry, I can go and factorize some more. I can take out 2x here. So I get 2x squared minus 4x. Okay, so from here I get 4x minus 8. Now I can put 4 here. So 4x minus 8 is 0, 0. So this is the quotient and this is the factor. So x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4. That is what becoming the quotient over there. Then x squared minus 4, I can factorize x minus 2, x plus 2. So from here you can cancel this and this. You get this ready. Okay, now no problem. Now if I want to substitute limit of x goes to 2, can 4 plus 4 plus 4 over 4. So from here, very obvious, that is 12 over 4, which is basically going to be 3. So that is the limit over there. Can you all understand until here so far? Any problem until here so far? I'm waiting for a response. I hope if you have problem, you can ask. If no problem, then please respond back again. Thank you. Still waiting? No problem, sir. No problem, huh? Okay, that's good then. So, if no problem, can I, everybody? Okay, good then. So, once we finish substitution, eh, sorry, factorization, then the next method, which is called conjugate. Okay, the next method is called conjugate. So, what about conjugate right now? Okay, conjugate. Also, we substitute first. Okay, if I substitute x my x one inside here, I get one minus one on one minus one. The denominator becomes zero, so cannot lah. Okay, so cannot. So what I must do right now is I must, of course, uh, take the conjugate over here. So how to take the conjugate? Okay, let's see here. Limit of x goes to one. Square root of x minus one over x minus one. Now, the conjugate which I'm going to take, I'm going to take the numerator conjugate, x square, square root of x plus 1, square root of x plus 1. I expand out that, x minus 1 over x minus 1, square root x plus 1. Of course, the uh, denominator, I never expand. Okay, I never expand out. So, this and this will be cancelled off. I get 1. So, from here, I can substitute again and I get 1 over 2 over there. Can you all understand that? <coughs> Okay, so I hope until here everybody clear. Now, the can conjugate not necessarily must take the denominator. You also can take the numerator as the conjugate. So if square root x minus 1, you take the numerator, you get square root x plus 1 times both sides by square root x plus 1, numerator and denominator. You get square root x plus 1, square root x plus 1 times inside. You will get x minus 1, x minus 1, square root x plus 1. x minus 1 and x minus 1 can cancel off. So left only with square root x plus 1 there. Put 1 inside here, so you get 1 plus 1 there, which is 2 over there. So you already get the conjugate, uh, what the limit by using the method of conjugate. Of course, you might tell me, sir, can I factorize? Can. Some people like to factorize, okay? They can write down like this. Limit of x goes to 1. This is square root x minus 1. Square root x plus 1 over square root x minus 1. You can factorize this way and also you will get the answer too. So in this case, both method works. Okay, conjugate also work, factorization also work. Uh, but there are certain cases where factorization doesn't work. You have to use conjugate only. Can you all understand until there so far? Any problem until here so far? Uh, I'm still waiting. Jin Swan, okay. Well then, okay. Lim. Are you okay? No respond. Hello, respond please. All right. 
Melden Lim Jinsuan, okay not? Yes. Yeah, okay. Are they okay? Okay, cool then. So if all okay, then I'm one. Jinsuan, are you there? Okay, yeah. okay, cool then. Uh -huh. Okay, so if no problem, then I move on. Now. Okay, so now let's see how to find the limits over here, below here. So if you see over here, the limit to find for this function over here, part one here, limit of x goes to 5. Okay, x minus 5. Uh, here, of course, I factorize x minus 5, x plus 5. Cancel, cancel. I really get 1 over 10 then. So done now, part one. Part two then, uh, okay, we can also see that there is negative 2x minus 4 here is x cubed plus 2x squared so if i take out negative 2 i get x plus 2 here okay if i take out x square here i'm going to get x plus 2 also okay so i can cancel cancel this uh this is the limit okay maybe i can drop off this part first hold on uh limit of x going to negative 2. So if you substitute negative 2 inside there, you get negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 over 2. Then the next part there, 2 there. So if over here you see, this is x minus 2 over 2 minus square root of 6 minus x. Of course, I will take the conjugate of the denominator, 6 plus x, 2 plus 6 plus x there. Square root. So if I expand this, I get x minus 2. 2 plus square root of 6 plus x over uh, here will become 4 minus 6 plus x. Okay, which I really see over here. This is x minus 2. So this and this will cancel. So put 2 inside there. You get 2 plus square root 6 my, uh, plus 2 there, which is square root 8. Nah? So 2 plus square root 8, I think. Yep. Uh, wait, uh, did I do anything wrong here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, uh, okay, I think I'm correct. So 2 plus square root 8 there. Okay, so correct answer there. Uh. Okay, the answer there is 2 plus square root 8. I think my answer is correct. My calculation is correct there. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I think, yes, my mistake here. Sorry. My mistake here. This is supposed to become 2. Okay, this is supposed to become 2 square root 6 minus x. Huh? Square root 6 minus x minus x. Huh? So 4 then. So 2 plus 2, which gives you 4. All right. Okay, answer that. Ah, so part 4 there, you can try line eh? taking the conjugate. You can see the conjugate over there. Square root 3x plus 1 minus 1 times the square root 3x plus 1 plus 1 okay over 2x square root 3x plus 1 plus 1 okay so it's not necessary that you have to take the conjugate of the denominator only you can even take the conjugate of the numerator over there. okay now let's see how is a limit defined this is the important part now eh? how is a limit defined a limit is defined <coughs> only if okay limit is defined if it's only uh, from the left hand side and from the right hand side, this has the same limit. Okay, then only we say the limit that x equals to goes to a exists. Lah. Okay, like if not, it's called a one sided limit. This is x going from the right hand side, and this is x going from the left hand side. So, x going from the right hand side here, we get L. From the left hand side here, we get M. If M equals to L, then therefore limit of x goes to a uh, exists okay for fx exists nah. if m does not equals to l then the limit does not exist if m does not equals to l then the limit does not exist so then, okay so i hope that is clear so let's see over here okay uh, we look at the graph over here we can see that from the left hand side over here Okay, the limit is coming from here. So, this is the graph which we are going to use. Okay, the limit is 3. So, the limit from the left-hand side is 3. 
And then we look over here, limit from the right hand side, the graph is coming from here, also is 3. So the limit over there also is 3. So at the end of the day, we know that limit of x goes to 2 for this graph function fx is going to be 3. Lah. Okay, it's going to be 3 over there. But if you just look over here, uh, from here, x going to 0, x going towards 0, we know the limit exists, the limit exists, which is 3 over here. Okay, here is 3. So from the right hand side, exists. 0 positive exists. But from the left hand side, there is no graph over here. If there is no graph, the limit does not exist. So this is called one-sided limit. This is what we call one-sided limit. Understand that? Clear? Okay. So since it's a one-sided limit, if I give you like this, limit of x goes to zero, gx, uh, we say does not exist. Why? Because the limit from left-hand side and right-hand side is not the same. So the limit does not exist. Can you all understand until here so far? Any problem? Can? Okay. Uh, we look at one example over here. If you look at this graph over here, square root of x minus 1 here. If I draw this graph like this, okay, and from the right-hand side, I know from the right-hand side the limit exists. The limit from the right-hand side, the value is going to go to 0. So, the limit from the right-hand side is 0. Okay? But limit from the left-hand side. From the left-hand side, there is no graph at all. So, since there is no graph, therefore, the limit from the left-hand side does not exist. Okay? Limit from the left-hand side does not uh, exist. Lah. So, here will be does not exist. Okay, this means does not exist. I hope until here you all are clear. Lah. Clear? Okay. But if you look over here, this is a different question, this different case to be. Limit from the left-hand side exists, which is going to be zero. But limit from the right-hand side or oh, here does not exist. Does not exist. Okay. So if limit does not exist over here, Therefore, there is no limit from the right-hand side. Left-hand side, yes. Okay, this is left-hand side. So, left-hand side, yes. Lah. Limit x goes, fx will be, the, uh, fx, x goes to 2, limit, the answer is uh, 0. Sorry, not 2, uh, 0. You can see that, the y value, uh, the y value. Uh. Okay, so if I want to test the existence of limit, you must understand one thing very, very clearly that limit from the left hand side and the right hand side must exist. And the limit must be the same. The limit from right hand side, left hand side must exist and must be the same. Limit of right hand side and left hand side must exist and the limit must be the same. Ah, so understand that. Lah. Clear? Okay, so now let's look at this question over here. Okay, we have, yeah, say. I don't understand that part. Okay, again, this part is it? The existence of limit is it? Uh, for the part where like, you say it does not exist, then the value for the last thing you say is something. Okay, if I say the limit of the left hand side and right hand side exists, okay, limit of left hand side and right hand side exists, then okay then the limit will exist if and only if the limit of right hand side and left hand side is the same i show you in the diagram form this is your line okay this is your a value this is from your left hand side this is from your right hand side if here the limit is l here also limit l therefore limit exists at x equals to a. Can I understand this now? Simple as that. So yeah. how about the graph above? The graph above here, limit does not exist. Mm -hmm. Here, limit does not exist. If you ask me the existence of limit, limit does not exist. Why? Because... Wait, wait. Because left-hand side limit exists. But right-hand side limit does not exist. But, but, okay, but... In this question here, they are specifically looking at the left-hand side only. 
if they are looking at the left hand side only then yes we can say the limit is x close fx goes to zero lah. can you understand that but how do i know if they are ah, the question will tell lah. the question will tell the question will draw for you the question will tell you okay, okay. Ah, the question will tell you but this is one-sided limit if the question tell you it's a one-sided limit then yes lah, limit exists lah. If the question never tell you it's a one-sided limit, then definitely limit does not exist. Clear with that? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Now you look over here. Given this function over here, okay, the function over here is supposed to be at the top here. So 2x plus 3x greater than 4. So let's draw a number line first. I always like to draw a number line for this type of question because it makes our life easy. So 4 is here. And inside this number line, you're going to label the function. So here is 2x. Yeah. And on right. top of this also is 2x, yeah. means at 4 also is 2x. And more than 4 is 2x plus 3. Okay, yeah. label like this first. Yeah. Now we check, we, we test line. We test limit of x goes from 4 negative, means 4 left hand side, which is the function of 2x here. We get the answer 8. Yeah. Limit of yeah. x goes to 4 positive, because from the right hand side, the function is 2x plus 3. Oh, the answer is 11. So is this 8 and 11 the same? Is this 8 and 11 the same? No. If 8 and 11 is not the same, does the limit exist? Does the limit exist at x equals to 4? Uh, no. Lah. So limit of x goes to 4, fx does not exist. Why? Because left hand side and right hand side limit is not the same. Okay, left hand side and right hand side limit is not the same. So, limit does not exist. You draw this table, then this number line, sorry, and then you write down this working and this working, and then you write down this uh, full mark, so you don't worry. Can you understand this or not? Can or cannot, class? Okay, I give one more example. I give one more example. Let's look over here. Okay, they give you uh, x not equals to 1, x equals to 1. Okay, and others one they never give you. Uh. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah, okay, got two only. Lah. X not equals to 1 and 1. So x is 1 over here. Okay, x is 1 over here. So now let's see. Uh, if x is 1 over here, and when x is 1, the limit is 5. When x is not equals to 1, means here is 2, here also is 2. So let's find out limit of x from the left hand side. 2, the function is 2, right? Is 2. Limit of x from the right hand side, 2, the function also is 2. Because constant, the uh, limit is a constant again, right? Not? So now limit of the left hand side and limit of the right hand side, is it the same? Same. If limit is the same, does the limit exist? Limit of x goes to 1 of fx equals to 2 because it's the same. So the limit exists. Can I understand this or not now so far? Okay. Take no response. I hope to get a response, please. Can I get a response, please? Are you all okay? Oh, can you hear me? Okay, understand. Okay. Understand, huh? Okay, good, Maria. Okay, cool then. Let's see another one more. Okay, let's see another one more. Uh, we have modulus of x minus 2 here. If you see the graph of a modulus of x minus 2, the graph is like this. Yes, not? Here, Maria. Okay, this is the graph over here. We know this is the graph. Okay, and we know that this is going to be 2. Okay, this is for x, negative x, plus, sorry, this will be for negative x, uh, wait, uh, uh, this will be for negative x, plus 2, and this will be the function of x minus 2. Okay. So, how I know that? Very simple. You look at the question. Lah. Okay, if I extend this graph over here, by extend this thing is going to cut at negative 2 so definitely here the equation will be x minus 2 here the equation will be negative x minus 2 lah. opposite mark gradient will be negative there so negative x plus 2 there okay negative x plus 2 so
So if I draw my number line over here, this is 2. Okay, here is x minus 2 from the right-hand side. Here is negative x plus 2 from the left-hand side. And at the function of 2 here, anyone also can. Nah? So you want to put x minus 2 also can. You want to put negative x minus 2 also can. So now let's check the limit. Limit of 2 left-hand side. x goes to 2 left-hand side. Negative x plus 2, you get 0. Limit of x goes to 2 right-hand side. x minus 2 also, we get 0. Or limit is the same. So since the limit is the same, so limit of fx from x goes to 2 is 0. Can you understand under that? That's all only. Simple as that. So limit exists only if left hand side and right hand side is the same. Okay. Okay. That is one part. Lah. Okay. Now, next one there is called infinite limits. Okay, the next part there is called infinite limits. So let's see about infinite limits. What they mean by infinite limits over here. Okay, so infinite limit is if let's say x is approaching a and the thing is going to become zero. You can't factorize, you can't substitute, you can't take conjugate. Okay, you can't take conjugate, you can't substitute, and you can't even factorize. Okay, so over here you will get limit of x going to 1 from positive side, 1 over x minus 1. So let's put 1 here first. Okay. Since it's from the positive side, means from here, uh, we're going to use approximation. We take one number here, 1.00001. We take one very, very small number, which is a little bit bigger than 1. Nah? Because we know we put 1, it's going to become 0. So we cannot put 1. So we take 1.00001. So from there, we can write down this as 1, 1 minus 1.0001 minus 1. It's 1 over 0 0.0001. Okay? So now, once I get this already, 1 divided by 0 0.0001, you're going to get a very big number, which is nearly infinity. Which is nearly infinity. Because I went from the right-hand side, so I take 1.0001. But if let's say you go to the left-hand side, Okay, you are going to go from the left hand side. I'm going to do at the top here. Left hand side is here. So the next one number before 1.0001 is going to be 0 0.99999. Okay, so 1 over 0 0.9999 minus 1. This is 1 over negative 0 0.0001, which is negative infinity. That's all. Ah, so this is what we call approximation method. Okay, when we cannot do a D, we use approximate. Understand why I say approximate? Because we approximate the value over here. These two value we approximate. Can you understand until that? Any problem until here so far, class? Anybody can understand? Okay, cool. Let's see another one more. Okay, if you look over here, for limit of 1 over x minus 2 squared, limit of x goes to 2. Okay, now if you look of this function over here, of course, if I want to substitute 2 inside there, I'm going to get 0. So if I'm going to get 0, the function becomes undefined. So cannot use substitution, so fail. Okay, next one we learn factorization. Cannot factorize it because nothing to factorize over there. Third one, conjugate. No use. Take conjugate also, cannot solve the problem. So, the fourth method is approximate. Lah. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to approximate here. We put 2. Here is going to become 2.00001. Here is going to become 1.9999. So, from the left-hand side, this is going to be negative infinity. Oh, but remember, got square there. So, this will become positive infinity. From the left, right hand side also will become positive infinity. Instead, will become positive infinity. So, both also is what? Positive infinity, positive infinity. So, we know that the limit exists. Limit of x goes to 2 of 1 over x minus 2 square is just infinity. Uh, since both also positive infinity, positive infinity, therefore, the limit is positive infinity. Over there. Can I understand this now? Clear until then? Okay, let's look at exercise 1 here first, right? Before we move on. 
It says refer to the diagram determine the limit of the function below. Okay, no problem. Limit of x goes to negative 2. So negative 2 is here. Now negative 2 from the left hand side. Huh? They want from the left hand side. So if I go from the left hand side from here to here. Okay, I know this is the value down here. Right, this is the value which I'm going to supposed to get. Lah. Okay, this is the value which I'm supposed to get. I think the value is missing over there. The value is negative 1. Okay, so here is negative 1. Now from the right hand side also, if I go from the right hand side, uh, this red color line here also is negative 1. So negative 1. Now let's see at the 3 then. Okay, 3 from the left hand side, if I go from here to here, oh, it's 3. So here is 3. But limit of fx from x goes to 3 positive means from the right hand side. Okay, from the right hand side, maybe I use green color from here. Oh, the limit is 4 there. Let's see. So here is 4. So from here, I can conclude that this is not the same. So limit of x goes to 3 fx uh, does not exist does not exist. After this, got continuity. Yeah? If limit exists, then it will be continuous. Nah, eh? uh, if limit does not exist, it will straight away be not continuous. Okay. Now, in this case here, it's the same. So, limit of x goes to negative 2 fx. Uh, this exists. Which is negative 1. Can you understand until here? Uh, that's what they mean. There. Okay. Now, if you look at here, Oh, find the value of limit of x1 over x squared minus 4. So if I use like this, limit of x goes to 2 positive 1 over x squared minus 4. I know one thing that I only can break up this to x plus 2, x minus 2. That's all only. And there is no, no way I can take conjugate or what, nothing. Okay? So since... No way I can take the conjugate or anything over there. So what I can do here is basically... Okay, uh, here I can use approximate method. 2 is here. Uh, the number which I'm going to take here may be 1.9999. Here will be 2.0001. So 1.999 square the thing minus 4 is going to become negative or positive infinity. Uh, that's what we have to see now. Okay, negative or positive <laughs> infinity. So uh, if I calculate that, 1.999 square there. Let me just check 1.999 square minus 4. Oh, we're going to get negative there. So this is going to become uh, negative infinity. Okay, if I put 2.0001, 2.0001 square uh, minus 4, this is going to become positive infinity. Okay, and the same thing goes with this now negative 2. So if negative 2 here will be negative 1.999 but doesn't matter much because you're going to square the number. So when you square the number here, here will become, uh, right hand side will become neg uh, negative yeah, negative infinity and here will become positive infinity. Can you understand that so? Clear? Because here we are going to take negative 2.0001. Uh, calculate C, is it positive or negative over there once you minus the thing? Okay. Any question until here so far? Any question until here so far? Oh, sorry. Okay, if no question, then uh, before I move on some more, yeah, I think I can move on a bit more. Uh, wait, uh, no. I think this one pull on first. This one will go on for next Monday. Lah. Okay, until here, everybody okay? Can I understand until here? Okay, if can, then very good. Uh, let me just see uh, if I have. Uh, yes, okay. So let's look over here a little bit first for your exercise. For now. Hold on for a while. 
Okay, let's look over here now. Okay, so if you look at this questions over here a little bit, okay, we try and see, limit questions here, and see that how does actually it helps you lah. This is continuity, so limit. Yeah, okay, here. Yeah. So if you look over here, you can see this now. Uh, x power of 4 minus 16. X power of 4 minus 16 can be written as what? X square square minus 4 square. So this I can factorize to X square plus 4, X square minus 4. Then over here become x minus 2. So x square minus 4 can break up some more. x square minus 2, x square x plus 2, x minus 2. So x minus 2, x minus 2 can cancel. Now from there I can substitute and from there you straight away get your answer already done uh, by using substitution. Uh, over here, if you look over here, uh, this is no choice already. Lah. Okay, I have to use conjugate. Uh, wait, this one never, never learned yet. Hold on for a while. Uh, here now. Okay, if I look over here, this is 1, so 1 plus e power of x. Here is 2 minus x, and on top here is 1. So from left-hand side, x goes to 1, left-hand side, x goes to 1, positive side. So if I substitute inside here 1, I'm going to get 1 plus e. If I substitute inside here 1, I get 2 minus 1. So since this and this is not the same, so the limit does not exist. Understand? The limit does not exist. Okay? Now, let's see over here. The next one there, B. Uh, here, it's very obvious. It's a conjugate. Okay? Because I can factorize. No problem. But factorization is not going to help me much. Lah. Okay? No no doubt, I will do factorization. Square root x plus 7. Okay? 3 plus square root x plus 7. Okay? Here, you can factorize to x minus 2, x plus 2. 3 plus x square root x plus 7. Okay? Now, from here, if I expand, I get 9 minus x minus 7 over x minus 2, x plus 2, 3 plus square root x plus 7. Yeah. So, from here, you can see this is negative x minus 2 here. So, x minus 2, x minus 2 can cancel. From there, you substitute and you get your answer straight away also. So, you can go and see all these examples line given to you already. Okay. So now let's see over here. If I put zero inside here, oh, it's going to, going to be very disastrous now because it's going to be zero over zero. So what I can do is I can factorize out. Take out x, I get m plus 3x. Take out x here, I get 4 minus 8x. Now this can cancel. So if I put zero inside there, I get m over 4. Now since m over 4 equals to 3, so m must equals to 12. Done. Simple as that only. You can see that. Okay. Uh, so what I will actually suggest to you is uh, you can try and look at these questions over here and try and attempt by yourself again. Uh, every detail working is given. Okay. Uh, first either you do substitute. Uh, first you do substitution. Fail. Go and do uh, factorization. Factorization fail. Go and do conjugate. Conjugate fail. Then you do approximation. Uh, if then, uh, then from there you will be able to see how actually you can see. The, the limits. Lah. Just be careful with modulus. Modulus, you have to break up lah, always. Okay, break up to x minus 2, greater or equals to 2, and x negative x minus 2 there, or x less than 2. Okay. Uh, modulus must always break up. Any question at the here so far? Any question at the here so far? Okay, if no question, then I think I will stop here today. I hope that you can go and look into the limits questions in your tutorial and try to attempt the limit questions in your tutorial there. Okay, uh, with that, thank you class and we stop here today. Okay, so uh, if no problem, then I stop here today. Lah. Okay, thank you, class. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.